I want to switch gears a little bit. There's been a lot of media and public attention to the vaccine race, uh, but I also know that there's the development of the monoclonal antibodies against the virus. And I believe your institute, along with Regeneron, for example, are working on that. And I think you've been quoted as saying you might bet, bet on them as far as being an important uh, factor with regard to bringing the pandemic under control. Can you just chat about the monoclonal antibodies being developed? Yeah, well, there are a couple of companies that are doing that. You know, Lilly and Regeneron and AZ is also thinking about doing that, I believe. So here's the trials that are ongoing. There are trials for monoclonal antibody as an outpatient, as an inpatient, prophylaxis in nursing homes, and prophylaxis slash treatment in families where you have an infected person and you want to prevent infection in the rest of the family. Those are four trials that are ongoing right now. The one thing that we really need to do is get a bunch more interventions for early infection to prevent people from going on to needing hospitalization. The reason I say that is that we got two good therapies for advanced disease. You got remdesivir for hospitalized patients with lung disease. The placebo controlled trial showed it diminishes the time to recovery significantly. Then there's the dexamethasone trial from the UK, which showed that in hospitalized patients on ventilators, that it decreases 28 day mortality significantly. What we need more of are therapies that are given early on that prevent people from getting into the hospital. And that, getting back to your original question, is one of the things that we hope monoclonal antibodies will do. Earlier this spring, there was a discussion around the serologic antibodies to COVID-19 being detected in survivors. And there was this talk of immunity passports, which were quickly debunked. Um, but do we have a better understanding yet about what role are the serologic antibodies going to play and going forward, whether it's post-infection, post-vaccine? And is there going to be a standardized way of looking at this across the country? You know, it's too early to make any determination because there's so many unknowns. First of all, people who get infected and recover, we find that sometimes within a period of a couple of months, they lose their antibody. Does that mean that they're not protected anymore? Or is there T cells there that protect them? There are some people who have high levels of antibody, but they're not really neutralizing antibodies that might actually not protect you. I think there are so many unknowns. We better put a pause and say, we're not gonna make any definitive statements about what an antibody test means, except to say, it means that you were infected. You'd like to say, it means you were infected and therefore you're protected. But I don't think we can definitively say the second part of that. We could definitively say the first. Right. You got antibodies, you've been infected. But we don't know really functionally what that means.